Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I have a TM versus EIS from server, I believe, 44, all against each other in this jam-packed group of war. We're going to be watching it from different players' perspectives through the Discord, so just be aware for any of the quality during the video. I can't control that, I do apologise, but that is where, as you saw just there in the intro, the little quick flick between screens. So we're going to be able to watch three different players' points of view during this whole f full highlights of the game, as well as the live full gameplay, which will be uploaded later on today. So with all that intro said, let's get into the full highlights of TM versus EIS. Who will win, server two or server 44? Smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons videos. And yes, we're going over TM and EIS today in their Roots of War. Full highlights here for all the jam parts and giving you the guys the scoop on who obviously won that game. So here we're just showcasing the opening gambit, as I like to call it now, the way the game starts for the Alliance. So the TM boys are aiming on four different structures. They're hitting four different rallies, as well as they are split up into three different teams. You have the top, middle, and bottom team. A lot of, obviously, organization, which I would say, if you're in a competitive Root of War team, should be normally a basic fundamental that a lot of teams should be following anyway, right? So their aim for this is to actually capture the, and occupy the middle zone. So they're going to try and fight for the middle because once they fight for the middle and control that middle zone, they're going to be able to then help and provide support more to the left and the right sides of the map, right? So here we've got three different perspectives to look out from. I want to thank them right now before we go straight any you know deeper into the video. I want to say yes, son. Thank you for sharing your screen as well as Eatlog, who was the MVP. I must admit for this because he streamed the full amount as well as Easy Peasy. Thank you, you three, allowing me to record your streams through Discord, which is the whole method of being able to do this. And again, if you guys want me to watch your roots of war. Hit me a DM, guys, and if I am free, I will jump into your Discord server and record your streams like this. And if you've got a good connection and stuff, obviously the quality of the video will change and be better on that regard, right? So just a little heads up for you guys. So yeah, we've got the opening gun with it, and as you can see, we've already got our points going. So TM already 1.2k ahead straight away, while the uh, EIS team are only just now gaining their points, which is 85 points. So you can see the points per minute at the top there, even though we're flicking between different fights here, um, is massive, right? We've got 260 points per minute on the TM side compared to only 80 on the blue side. But there we go, a big jump now for the blue. And this is where the blue are now gaining all of their score per minute as well. So you can see the early game, honestly, gaining those buildings first does give you a massive leap in points, right? Because the faster you can get them, the faster you get in the points back, right? So this is the very first ever fight that we're seeing and it's on the bottom side of the map. They're fighting for the bottom control of that hall. And if TM are able to defend this position from the EIS right now, they're going to be able to then push forward and claim that defensive structure and push forward into the EIS zone. So EIS have definitely understood this situation and already starting to deploy their troops coming up through the ramp there to our TM murder ball. But the EIS, I do remember, have a little secret plan here and an amazing strategic plan for this. And you can start to see it here. The cavalry is now arriving by EIS. All of these members are now swarming from two sides of the TM murder ball. And TM need to fight on the left and now they need to fight on the right. And are they gonna be able to actually withstand this? Because this is a very, very coordinated and dangerous attack by server 44s 
EIS team here, and it's an amazing attack to see, and TM are caught, basically, red-handed, they need to figure out which side they're going to fight for, they've been focusing down on that ramp there, and I do apologise on the quality, and this is what happens, obviously, when things get crazy during Discord, but... We can easily tell TM fought off the top side of those marchers now. And now they're defending the ramp. They now need to defend the back side of all of these EIS trying to push them. Are they going to be able to do it? Are they going to be able to hold their ground and actually protect this zone so more TM members can come and defend them? This is going to be one of the most craziest openings that we will see in one of the opens for a Roots of War gameplay. But you can see there, these lines coming from the orange on the right side of the map to this hall of power since the middle right now for the tm alliance is actually winning they didn't need any troops really in the middle so they are moving those troops over to the main open field here We've got Easy Peasy's point of view right now on this same situation. And you can see his troops with some of the other TM members have now come in from the back. They are now hitting those marchers of the EIS members from behind while the ramp of the murder ball of the TM are trying their best to help support and kill those troops so they can either refresh or defend that structure, right? So very intense opening on both sides there. I want to say props to EIS there and the TM. Both sides showing some absolute masterclass there on PvP and even coordinated attacks from both sides. So honestly, I hope you guys have been enjoying it because this is honestly one of the most insane reason wars that we're going to be able to commentate over for this episode so let's go over and we're going to move forward in time to the future where we're going to be able to see some more craziness because this again is only the opening gambit this is only within the first five to ten minutes of the game so let's go into the future and welcome back and we're at the 36 minute mark and the score as you can see is already getting a little bit of a worry there is already a 4,000, nearly 5,000, 6,000 score difference between the TM and EIS side here. You got 15.3k on TM versus the 8,500, which might be more now. There we go, 9,000 score on the EIS side. So again, this is only coming up now to the 36 minute mark. We've got six minutes before we hit halfway almost of the game. So it is very worrying, but TM have launched their attack. They are trying to maintain all the control of that Hall of Power in the center, as you can see. They've got a Madeline in there with Nika for the garrison. They're trying their best to make sure they hold the enemies hall of power against them and you can see here the eis have shown up now this is where they need to address this problem they need to take control of it and if they don't this is where they're going to lose honestly their game because if they can't gain back this hall of power the amount of points that you lose per minute for your alliance is just absolutely devastating and you can see the tm alliance here even though they've got loads of troops there getting absolutely demolished they are refreshing and bringing more troops here so you can see eis finally swarming down the tower and retaking it so it is on a two minute timer now so they need to make sure they can hold that building for two minutes now without it losing it because again they've just pumped in all that hard work to reclaim it but if there's a rally or more marches on the way to reclaim that back for the tm members that is going to be some wasted time and troops for the eis side so we are watching again from easy peasy's point of view here and he's brought his cavalry he's got his majors out as well and he's archers his archers are currently in a rally that's why his artifact is kind of blanked out if you were wondering but his other marchers are in the open field you can see his other two finally just got absolutely obliterated there but he's brought his 200k march which is a veil in there and it looks like he might be using that Valen Wild Deer March, which is a very popular march right now for a lot of players to run compared to running Lilia and Valen, which is a very big surprise that I have started to see. So here, we've got a massive push by EIS. Are they going to be able to come? We can see there, for a little brief moment, the refreshment of the members of the TM Alliance. So 
This was a really funny moment. I just want to say this um, and point it out. Obviously, I'm in the Discord and I can hear everyone talking. And obviously, that's going to be muted for this video because I don't want, obviously, someone might be saying stuff and you guys might get offended. I don't want to get any of that in the video. I don't want to get in that mess, right? So, the funny thing was, though, someone did say, and a really good one, remember to heal. Remember to heal because those guys might have been fighting all that time and forgot to press the heal button from the tree of healing. And, and if they did, guess what? You've just maxed out the healing from your free resource healing in Roots of War and you're not gaining anything. So you need to make sure that healing button is being used during that Roots of War. So nice little tip there. And we're watching it now from Eat Log's point of view. And I'm not going to lie, Eat Log here is an absolute monster. And he, I like the way he is playing right now. So the way Eat Log is playing, he's on the bottom team. And he knows they are fighting for middle control. So what they've done is they've easily basically controlled the bottom side. They're able to win this bottom side and they've got it all under control. So what he is doing is basically bringing his marches. He's just quickly defending anything that he needs to to defend and once he's reclaimed it and defended it guess what he walks all the way up to this bridge and this bridge is the bridge that connects to the hall of power where the tm members are fighting so if him and any more bot members from the tm alliance do appear in this zone as one big murder ball and just fret that push guess what eis are going to be in trouble because they're going to get attacked from two different sides by the TM Alliance. So I hope you've been enjoying it. We're gonna fast forward it again into the future. This has been an amazing uh, fight for Roots of War. And again, if you wanna watch the full video, guess what? This is gonna be uploaded as well later on. The full live stream will be there. So just check it out. And I hope you guys have been enjoying this uh, TM versus EIS on server, 34, uh, server 44 versus server two in this week's Roots of War. And welcome back. I know we're a little bit closer to comfort. We normally do a big jump, but this is absolutely amazing to watch. And this is what we was talking about earlier, what you had to worry about by EIS. TM on this left side now with E-Log pushing as the main charge here with his infantry units, with his support behind him. They are pushing in on that left bridge and now EIS are in a situation. They have to now fight and defend from two points, meaning their troops are being split with their attention and the attention split is honestly where things matter because again, if those two murder balls or your main murder ball is split between left and right and they're not targeting the same marches correctly, guess what? You've halved that power and even weakened it even further because you've basically caused a problem to occur in that murder ball and you've basically said right look we're gonna ask you can you focus us correctly and if you can guess what congrats but if you can't focus us you're gonna get punished for it and that is a really good little poker card here and what they did and this is a really good example from eis strategic plan They've dealt with the bottom guys here and you can see the TM already refreshing the troops but they brought the Hydra that they summoned around to actually deal with the flank and by dealing with the flank now these guys have to either choose do we kill the Hydra or do we just retreat and allow it just to get some free damage off and you know waste its time because if the Hydra is being wasted its time here on the left Guess what? It's not in the middle where our Hydra is on the TM side. So a very, very interesting little part there. I've been loving this bit of the fight. So let's move forward again a little bit closer. And you can see the points, 23,000 to 12.7. So you've already got a 10K, almost 11K difference there on the teams. So let's go forward and see how the TM and ES game does progress into one of the most craziest open fields at the end of the game. And welcome back. We're in the last seven minutes of today's game. And you're going to see here the Flame Dragon on the TM side absolutely burning to crisp those EIS members there. Absolutely amazing beam a behemoth master there. I'm just saying, like, whoever is the beast master controlling that had a really good position for their AoE damage. You can see it hit everyone possible, which was just absolutely savagery. And the thing is, the dragon in Roots of War, guys, on both sides, if you're able to use it really well, it does so much damage there. 
So here we go, EIS now in the center. They're trying to basically fight against the TM. TM pushing this one last time again through the center to see if they're able to do this. And guess what? EIS, see the little, you know, jumbering that's happening on the flank and they're gonna address the flank, which is really cool to see. I like the fact they're doing this, but E-Log, E-Log's not having any of it. He's got all of his marches here now. He's got his cavalry, he's got his majors. He's even got a archer on the way that's marching here. You've got his other march fighting against the enemy here, which is really interesting to see. So you can see one player micromanaging two marches in two different fighting zones, basically, or three marches in the two zones. So really, really um, interesting to see. You can see a massive Phoenix eye drop there by Elog, and yes, his Leah is going to die, which is fine. You know, he was only trying to buy time for his march, and you can see there another decision made by Elog's uh, cavalry. He's moved it up to see if he can maybe basically steal something for free. And his other march, his Syndrome, nicely walking as a rally lead through the EIS, and they've got to basically either kill that. Or guess what? They're going to lose. They're going to lose another building. So this is a very interesting dynamic here. AIS defending for their lives here before this rally does go to that healing tree because that's where his target is. He's aiming for it. He's aiming to kill it there. The last time they checked it out, there wasn't that many resources in the the actual buildings. The scout report there was for this outpost. So we're watching Eatlog there basically kill this outpost from the scout report he got earlier from um, the information. So you can see here, honestly, very smart decision making. You can see the fact that he's gathering intel, using that intel to actually make very informed decisions instead of just recklessly attacking or just going in, you know, craziness, right? So I hope you've been enjoying it. This is the TM versus EIS server 44 versus server two. We, we've been enjoying it. This was a blast. I know these guys probably did live stream it and they had loads of different um, people streaming this game. So it was live viewed for everyone to see on both sides, I believe, which was a really cool one. But we've got the last push here. We're gonna fast forward time to the last couple of minutes here because we wanna see what the final score is. There is a 30,000 point differential here and this is just showcasing how important capturing those buildings and holding buildings and even gathering resource points is so important for roots of war all of these different types of points gaining for your alliance you can get some absolute crazy points and that's what you need in order to win Roots of War. So we're at the last minute. You can see it's a definite win on the TM side here. They're leading one last final charge by them. They've got the front line here um, by Turquoise and then EIS pushing themselves. Fang of Akashikare being used. Absolute tongue twister right there by them. And this is what I'm saying. I do apologize for the 10 FPS as if we were playing on a PlayStation 2 right now. But the problem was, you know, we're on Discord and everyone might not be playing on a really good internet connection or they might not have a good computer. So it's just one of those like, and I'm happy to showcase that, you know, I'm happy to show that, look, we are able to get footage from Discord from you guys. So if you want me, again, if you are part of another server and you've got Roots of War and you want me to record your Roots of War and do a nice full highlight video like this, hit me up and I will do a full highlight video of your Roots of War and just need some obviously time to jump in and if I'm free, we'll be on our way and we'll be recording. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video on Roots of War, TM versus EIS, clearly. TM are the victors here, server two, victorious, and server 44. Maybe but next time we'll provide maybe a better game plan for them, but we get to see who the MVP was on this game. So when we hit, we've got Mayol on 103,000 points, which was absolutely crazy, because I know the EIS whale on their side, I think it's their leader, he was competing very close to Mio's score. I don't know his final score, but I know it was within, again, maybe 102, 101,000. It was very close for whoever could have the bragging rights of the number one points. So I hope you guys in EIS 
enjoyed the game. I hope you guys in TM also enjoyed the game and I hope you guys enjoyed today's full highlights of your Roots of War on the weekend. So thank you for watching, thank you for the support, thank you for watching all the way through if you made it this way and if you have, like I said, smash a like, comment and subscribe and until the next video guys, stay safe, stay sneaky and peace out.